Today, January the 17th, 2024, Nikon released new firmware updates for the Z5, Z6 II, and Z7 II cameras. That's uh, 1.41 to 1.42 for the Z5, 1.6 to 1.61 for the Z6 and Z7 II. They're not what you'd call major releases. The version log says, fixed an issue that in rare circumstances in which the camera date and time were not set correctly when the camera was not used for an extended period of time. So let's call it a um, uh, time decay remedy. <laughs> I'm guessing for owners of the Z6 and Z7 II. It's not the kind of major firmware update that perhaps they'd been hoping for for a long time now. I know from many comments over the last year or so, they consider firmware updates that bring improvements to those cameras, well, like our weather here, <laughs> pretty much frozen. And I can't blame them for feeling like that. Certainly, they haven't received the kind of updates we've seen for something like the Z9. But that is a flagship. Uh, and despite the dual XSpeed 6 processors that came to those uh, cameras, that was supposed to be um, such an improvement over the Z6. For me, as the owner of two, first generation Z6s, the heck was that noise? The upgrade that came 18 months after the first gen, if I remember, uh, didn't make sense for me. Definitely it made sense for the first time buyers of those cameras. As a Z6 owner, the big upgrade, I can't recall the exact number that brought marked improvements to autofocus and tracking, that was something we, or speaking for myself, it wasn't something that I expected. So even though I wasn't one of the people who hated the existing autofocus performance at that time, there was no denying the noticeable improvement. I would think that further improvements to the first gen cameras is doubtful, but I'm still happy using mine, even though I now own a Z9, a Z8, and ZF. Again, as I've mentioned here before, one of my Z6s is performing overhead cam duty and the other is up for sale, <laughs> at least when I get around to it. Uh, that was a promise to myself when I bought the ZF, or was it something that I promised Amanda? <laughs> the ZF's 4K video is certainly a good replacement. I'm using it as a camera too here. The addition of 10-bit internal is a big plus in my books. As I've said here, on a number of occasions, there's nothing wrong with the internal 8-bit video from the Z6, Z7, Z6 II and Z7 II, as long as you're not pushing it too far in post-production. And then there's always the option of using an external recorder like the Atomos Ninja series. If you need to record log or raw with a factory update with those cameras. And speaking of, someone asked me in relation to that option, external recording, if I thought that was still needed since cameras like uh, Z9 and Z8 have given us so many options for wide gamut video. And I answered uh, with my approach since I've owned the Z9 and more recently the Z8, and that is that I'm not using the Ninja 5 anywhere near what I did, say, two years ago. For high contrast uh, scenes like this, 10-bit is still pretty decent, and that's what I'm using now <laughs> to test that proposition. I guess I'll see if I curse my choice, but, for YouTube, after compression, is there really a need to even shoot log? Well, I'd say there is a slight benefit, depending on conditions. Uh, there's the option of log or SDR. And even the SDR, standard dynamic range with a more limited range of brightness and colors, looks very nice for most jobs. And again, we'll see <laughs> if this looks okay once it gets to your screen. But 10-bit SDR is what you'll see in the majority of my videos here unless I'm facing extremely wide range situations. Now, I haven't mentioned Nikon's raw video options because I don't use them. I'd love to, if only they were usable in Final Cut Pro editing software. That's what I've used. But I have to say this, I've mentioned it a few times on this channel. Nikon's NRAW, developed in cooperation with Tico RAW, is only an option if you're a DaVinci Resolve editor, and I'm not. I'm usually satisfied with 4.1K ProRes RAW, which is also available internally with the Z8 and Z9. The other thing about using an external recorder, media, like the SSDs I use with my recorder, are a lot cheaper than the large CF Express cards. However, look for some new options of those 
CF Express B cards that I'll be reviewing soon. Storage demands are another critical part of the equation when considering recording options. Those ProRes files, even NRAW, are absolutely ginormous. Back to firmware. Speculation as to where the Z8 and Z9 in particular might go is still, <laughs> well, speculative. I'm still not sure I put much faith in the kind of rumors that we saw last month. And I offered my options on those rumors at the time, so I won't reprise them here. I'll add a link. But those rumored specs, the uh, improved burst rates, uh, I think it was pre-capture, etc. Of all of them, I was taken by the idea of a new log curve extremely close to log C4 for NRAW. And that might inspire me to learn Resolve. I guess I'd resolve to learn Resolve. I explained in that video, uh, at least I presumed, it referred to ARRI's Cineon Log 4, the industry standard for log footage. Again, crazy high burst rates of, say, 40 frames per second raw. That isn't something that I often need in my work, unless I'm shooting hummingbirds. <laughs> and in this weather, they're keeping us busy, changing the feeders because they freeze every couple of hours. It's actually warmed up today with this snowstorm from temperatures well below freezing, um, as low as minus 20 with wind chill factor. Here on the coast, record breaking lows for this usually more temperate corner of Canada. I have a lens review to complete, so I must finish this up and take advantage of the winter wonderland for some test shots. Look for that review in the coming days. But before I forget, these camera updates follow on a firmware update for the Nikkor Z DX 18 to 140mm f3.5 to 6.3 VR lens, firmware 1.01, .01, which fixed an issue that in rare circumstances would cause interruption of video recording with a message, recording interrupted, displayed on the camera when the lens zoom ring is operated during recording. These lens updates usually aren't anything earth-shaking, they usually just accommodate new cameras, for example, but all of the firmware updates that Nikon has given us since the Z system debuted, I really think illustrate Nikon's commitment to us, Nikon photographers. And I'll repeat again here <laughs> for the how many times, for those of us who own Z9s and Z8s, it would really be nice if Nikon gave us firmware parity when it comes to those cameras. Things like the same subject tracking. I'm sure all bird photographers who bought a Z8 would like bird tracking, which came to the Z9 with firmware 4.10. And at the risk of repeating myself, can we get skin softening added to the Z9? Let's just have both cameras equal in at least those areas. That would be a nice after Christmas present from Nikon. Well, as I said, I have gear to test, so I can bring you some new treats or options for your creative endeavors. But how are you doing with your existing cameras and lenses? Did you get what you wanted for Christmas? Please do let me know in the comments what features you find most useful with your gear, Nikon or otherwise. What updates would you like to see next? Or are you completely satisfied with what you have now? For sure, we've never had better technology at our fingertips and more options to pursue our photographic goals, and I should say, more resources to learn about the latest and greatest, or how to better use what we have. And I hope this video helped in whatever small way. If you found it handy, please do give it the old thumbs up. And if this is your first visit to the channel, please do consider subscribing. Hit that notification bell to make sure that you're alerted to new content. In the meantime, take care. Cheers, and we'll see you later.